first of all, I blame 100% blame the Big Ten because of this stupid Big Ten has a, a 10 teams, 12 teams, 14, 16. It's, they're stupid. I'm going to let you know right now. The Big Ten is the worst when it comes to names. <laughs> What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master of Football. Back at it again. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things EA College Football and watch plenty of college football content, subscribe to this channel right now. I also do plenty of Madden and pro content as well. Anything related to football, click that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Remember, click the red subscribe button, okay? All it's going to cost you, not going to cost you anything. It's just going to cost you being up to date on everything EA College Football, plenty of college football stuff, just anything related to football, man. You will love being subscribed to this channel. I promise you. Like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, I came across a story here, and I think that it's a prelude into a bigger story here. And I'll let you know, first of all, the fact that it looks like there's, I don't want to say conference realignment stuff is going to be imminent but it looks like things are starting to heat up a little bit here the contract negotiations between uh the media rights negotiations excuse me for the big 12 seem to be heating up a little bit i'm telling you george kliavkov is eerily quiet right now you know, it looks like that washington and oregon to the big 10 has slowed down we're gonna get some movement now that movement i'm gonna go ahead and lean into that into what i think is gonna happen there but i want to give a precedent here because there's a story like I said, that leads into a historical lesson on what we need to see looking forward to in conference realignment. Let's get into that story right now. So here we are with ESPN.com. We have Adam Rittenberg talking about Maryland QB Taulia Tagovailoa is a game time decision against Northwestern. So again, last week he uh, was at, went out there and he aggravated a right knee injury in Saturday's 38-33 win over Indiana. Mike Loxley said the three-year starter received an MRI and a second opinion on the knee, which he initially sprained in the September 24th loss at Michigan. Lost by seven. Very good loss. I mean, I'm not saying it's a good loss, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, he was carted off the field with 12-1 left in the fourth quarter against Indiana after being hit as he threw the ball. Back at Billy Edwards Jr. entered and led a seven-play 62-yard drive cap with a three-yard touchdown run that proved to be the game winner. Edwards had 53 rushing yards on five carries while failing to complete a pass on three Attempts. Loxley said the 5'11", 200-pound tag of Iloa benefited from having a brace on his knee against Indiana, even though he has been reluctant to wear one during games. It also mentions here in 2021, last season, he set team records for single-season passing yards, single-season completions, and single-season completion percentage. Tag of Iloa holds Maryland's career record for 300-yard passing games, completion percentage, and passing efficiency. So we come over here to Maryland, and I'm telling you, man, look at this. Win, 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 loss at Michigan, tough place to play. Come out against Michigan State, win, loss to Purdue. Purdue's a tough team. Purdue's one of those teams that always surprises people. And then a win even without your starting quarterback against Indiana. They come out here this next week. They play at home against Northwestern, and they're favored in that game. Here we are on sportsbetgm.com. They are favored by 13 and a half points over Northwestern. So we come back here and check that out. So if we look at that, there is a very, very, very reasonable percentage here that the Maryland Terrapins are going to be 6-2 and two entering November. And again, so if you see here, that definitely gets a little tough here at the end here. So at Wisconsin, Wisconsin still got a new coach to kind of figuring things out there. Penn State, you know, coming off that one loss, but it's still a quality program. Ohio State at home, that's going to be trouble. And then Rutgers at home. So, I mean, if they split there, I mean, that means they're going to end up probably 8-4. and four. That is shocking compared to what Maryland has usually been. And again, I want to make sure I highlight this really, really quickly. So in conference realignment, when you talk about who you want to add to your conference, there's a couple things you have to go over. And again, I'm, this is in no particular order, but it's, you know, tradition of your team, geographical region, media market, uh, fan base involvement, um, just anything like that, you know, a, a geographic location. There's lots of things that you have to, you know, a, a proximity to a close by, uh, you know, airport, something like that. That's a big reason why SME has been mentioned with the uh, the Pac-12 is because of their Dallas-Fort Worth, just really easy to get in and out, things like that. So there's a lot of things that go into that sort of thing. However, there's usually what it comes down to is whether or not you add money to the pot or not. Notre Dame right now is being mentioned a lot by the Big Ten because they're going to, they would obviously add to the Big Ten's pot. However, the uh, Notre Dame's like, eh, it's not enough money. We don't want to leave for you. We want to keep our independence. So with that, you know, you, you think about the conferences right now, Pac-12, Big 12. Those are the two ones that are mentioned right now. Again, Big 12 is already mentioned. The fact they're going through the contract negotiations. Pac-12 is being quiet, maybe a little bit too quiet. 
So we're kind of seeing what's going on there. But there's two things you can do here. Both of those conferences can make, you know, financial decisions, financial additions, where you know that if we add this team in, our pot's going to get bigger. Or you can add a strategic addition. And I want to talk about a strategic addition because Maryland was added to the Big Ten as a strategic addition. They, they added to the pot eventually, but they were on a graduated payment plan. So when they joined the league, they didn't get a full payment plan because they had to kind of work their way up to be a Big Ten team. And I think that you're seeing now that they're kind of getting to that point right now. So we come over here to the Big Ten. So the Big Ten has, first of all, I blame 100% blame the Big Ten because of this stupid Big Ten has a, a 10 teams, 12 teams, 14, 60. It's, they're stupid. I'm going to let you know right now. The Big Ten is the worst when it comes to names. So you see here in 1990 when Penn State was added from the A-10, you see how it says Big Ten, but you see this 11 right here. That, that's actually pretty cool they were able to do that. But they added them in, and then in 2010, they added in Nebraska to get it to 12. So the Big Ten was 12, and the Big 12 was 10. It was super stupid. Then they decided to name their divisions because they didn't really know how to name their divisions. They could have gone an American and National, a red or a blue, a, you know, but they, they went with leaders and legends. Again, the Big Ten sucks at naming things. And then ultimately, they came down here and they added Maryland and they added Rutgers. Again, so if you see this map right here, so Penn State's kind of out here on an island by themselves. Everybody else here kind of integrates pretty well with each other in terms of geographic region. But then Maryland and Rutgers were added. Rutgers were, was added because, obviously, you know, uh, AEU University. And it uh, gives you kind of somebody out here for Penn State to go out there and play closer trips and things like that for a lot of different sports. But also because proximity to New York, Maryland, proximity to New DC. Maryland was never really a good football program. So I've been doing this a lot here, coming through here and seeing the history of all of these programs. And you see the fact that for Maryland, I mean, gosh, other than Ralph Regan's initial years here, Ralph, Re Ralph Regan started, he went to Orange Bowl, Peach Bowl, Gator Bowl in three consecutive seasons. And then, you know, five and six, five and six, nine and four, six, seven, eight and five, two and 10, and then nine and four. And they ultimately let go of him at the end of that nine and four season. And he said he threatened to burn his uh, Maryland diploma. And then they had Randy Edsel and this and that. So since, you know, they joined the Big Ten, they've gone to, uh, what is that? They went to one, two, three bowl games. Hooray. Um, they've only been in the league for nine years here. But you see the fact you come down here and check this out. Like the 90s for them was terrible. They had a horrible 90s. They did okay here with a little bit for Bobby Ross. They did pretty good here with Jerry Claiborne. Uh, the 50s and six, the 60s was awful. No bowl games in the entire decade. The early, uh, the late 50s and then the early 70s was terrible too. So they went from 1956 until 1972, no bowl games. It was kind of a dark age for them. So they don't really have a lot of history here. But you come over here and you see this, the fact they're added to the Big Ten here. So every single player right here who's being recruited, who's on the team, even if you're a senior right now, when you were recruited, it was probably down here to 2018. Everybody who you had interacted with had only known Big Ten football. So again, it takes time, I think. And I don't, I, obviously right now, they're only like 50th right now in recruiting rankings. So I'm not saying they're this amazing power, but they're definitely getting to the point to where nobody looks at Maryland now and says, oh, Man, Maryland, they're, they're definitely not even a Big Ten team. I mean, maybe Ohio State does, but Ohio State says that to a lot of Big Ten teams. But they're kind of slowly getting acclimated to the league, and I think they're they're kind of turning this thing around. You know, 7-6 and six last year. They're 5-2 and two right now. They are probably going to be 6-2, and two, more than likely going to be even low-end 7-5, and high-end 8-4, and 9-3. and three. That's a real team in a real conference that was a strategic hire before, basically based on geography and this and that. They have since worked their way up in the league to be kind of a, I don't want to say a contender, but definitely they belong. So again, I keep on coming back to strategic additions because again, it's really great if you can go out there and get somebody and add to the pot and this and that, but there's nobody really obvious right now out there. Obviously everybody wants Notre Dame, but does Notre Dame want everybody else? That's the better question here. So Pac-12, Big 12, I keep on talking to the, both of those conferences out there because strategic moves, it basically is the only thing you're left at this point. There's one that's been mentioned and I... I'm not trying to say I don't know what the holdup is, but what the hell is the holdup, man? Why haven't you guys added San Diego State yet? They're on SI.com of the All Cardinals. So this is for the, uh, the Stanford Cardinal. It says, one school bound to eventually join Pac-12 on no more exits from the conference are expected. And again, this comes down here and this highlights the fact that it looks like San Diego State will eventually land in the Pac-12, according to John Canzano. Kanz I can spell Canzano wrong there. Uh, but basically, he also says that the four corner schools probably aren't going to leave for the Big 12. I know a lot of Big 12 people said they might. And even if the money in the Big 12 is higher, 
because of the lack of integration in this and that, and because it would be it would be a little bit more difficult logistically, it might not be worth it for them to switch over if Washington, Oregon, Stanford, and Cal leave then it is. But we're gonna get we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But right now the only strategic move on the board appears to be San Diego State. You know, again, Southern California, only team out there, new stadium. They've shown the ability to invest in it. Uh, again, the Cal, the Cal State UC system, uh, you know, back and forth might be interesting, especially with the Cal Bears. But man, it's, I'm telling you right now, that's a strategic move. I don't, I don't know why they're kind of dragging their feet on that because it's, it makes all the sense in the world. It especially helps you out because if you add San Diego State and a couple other members too, if there isn't an, uh, an exodus in terms of, you know, Washington, Oregon, then you still have some options there. If Washington, Oregon, Stanford, and Cal leave, it'll get a little dicey there, but you'll still at least have something to work with as opposed to adding one, losing four, and it's just the math doesn't really work out. You just need to add strategically here to defend your existing members going forward. I mean, this is a video, guys. Do not knock strategic ads. I'm telling you right now. I know this is, I know this is a little bit of home cooking here because I, I there would be a strategic ad, okay? Pretty popular team, blue turf. Everybody likes it. They're cool, isn't it? But I'm telling you right now, the Big 12, Pac-12 need to look at strategic moves because the the uh, Big Ten has done it before. The Big Ten is talking about adding Washington and Oregon out there already as well. They look like they kind of backed away from that, but still being discussed because they know eventually that's what the team wants to do. Ohio State kind of went, got a little little greedy there. They're kind of like, why would we want our money to go down that much? But man, I'm telling you right now, the strategic moves, Big 12, Pac-12, do not be against them because it looks like you know it might take some time. Granted, it's Maryland's ninth year in the Big Ten, but uh, they look like they're a real team that belongs, and I'm guaranteed the other teams would do that too. We've already seen with Utah. We've already seen with TCU. Who knows, man? Don't be against it. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all that stuff. I appreciate it. I am going to see you guys later. I'm gone.